What's up guys? Just pushed the plane out. It is a beautiful, brisk January day. And uh, the plan is I'm gonna go down and explore south of where I normally play. South of Reno and Gardnerville and work my way out into the east into a part of the desert I haven't explored that much. And the main goal today is just kind of to scout for what could be some potentially cool uh, like fly out camping spots this spring. So nothing really firm planned for today except for just go out, explore some new area. Chilly out, 33 degrees. Density altitude is showing 3,900. That's actually a new thing. I don't remember it showing the density altitude right under my actual altimeter, which is kind of rad. All right, temps are in the green. I got half flaps trimmed for takeoff. Full fuel on both sides are almost full. I think we're good to go. It's the traffic. Freedom Fox taking runway 26. It'll be a southbound departure instead. So there is some wind forecasted on ridges starting, I think later today, but more so tomorrow. So I'm hoping when we stay low, we won't be in too much of the, the wind. But we will find out, I guess. Gotta love thick winter air. I'm already at pattern altitude and I'm not even three quarters of the way down the runway. So my plan here is I'm gonna radio uh, NorCal Approach, which is who runs ATC for this whole area, and request permission to uh, enter Reno's airspace and transition to the south. Uh, normally they let us fly right through, but uh, go ahead and call them. I hate talking to ATC just because I'm a rambling idiot on the radio, so we will uh, we'll see how this goes. NorCal Approach, Experimental 318, Juliet, Juliet. November 318, Juliet, Juliet, NorCal. Yeah, good morning, NorCal. 318, Juliet, Juliet. I'm just off the ground at Reno Stead, looking to transition Reno airspace down to the south, and I'm right now at 6,800. November 8, Juliet, Juliet, Roger, what's your destination? Uh, I'm going to be going and playing around down near Minden, uh, Mike Echo Victor. Experimental 8, Juliet, Juliet, it's clock 0355. 0355, uh, 8, Juliet, Juliet. Number 8, Juliet, Juliet, radar contact over the Reno State Airport, the Reno Altimeter 3046. Understand you just want to fly following Juliet, Charlie? Uh, yep, that's correct. Uh, and, uh, 8, Juliet, Juliet. 8, Juliet, Juliet, Red. I wasn't necessarily requesting flight following, but I think that's what it would require for me to fly through the Charlie airspace. So, And currently, I am sitting at 5.4 gallons an hour at 7,500 feet indicating 90 miles an hour. My true air speed is 100 miles an hour, and my ground speed is only 90 because of this 13 mile an hour quartering headwind I have. For all my uh, airplane nerds wondering some stats. Experimental 8, Juliet, Juliet, squawk VFR, change to advisor, frequency approved, have a good day. Uh, over to VFR, thanks so much for your help, 8, Juliet, Juliet. That was mellow, very calm day over Reno. Some days you fly through there and it's just like, crazy the amount of traffic and then the the radio is just clogged as could be so anyway the goal today is i want to go check out an area that i went camping this last fall uh did a little camping and, and fishing trip on the east walker river and i walked out a spot that looked totally landable but i have yet to go and land there so my goal today is to go take a look at that if it looks good i'll, I'll put down and kind of scout out where we could potentially go with a few bush planes and and do a little camping and fishing this spring. After we take a look at the river, I'll probably head my way up north, check out some of the little desert spots. I have been out and landed over there a couple places, so we'll go see if any of them are dry and, and uh, landable. And I am just now climbing through 10,000 feet, and these mountains just to the south of me are towering over me. I think uh, on the map it says they're north of 11,000 feet. But I want to take a look at these because it's not that often that we have these uh, Mountains that are higher than 10 or 11,000 feet. So there I am, just broke 11,000 feet. I cannot honestly remember the last time I was even this high up flying. I'm always leaving myself an out though, knowing that if I had any engine trouble, I'd be beelining it down that and I've got an extra, you know, 5,000 feet here that I could descend and go land somewhere down there. Got about 14, 15 mile an hour winds, but it's surprisingly smooth. 
There is a little two track road below me, but I don't know. There's snow and patches on it and it's not very straight for very long. I feel like if I was ever to touch down somewhere this high up, I want it to be pretty straight for a pretty long time. So this right here is Mount Patterson, which I don't know if this will tell me. Uh, it doesn't show me how high it is. Man, there's a, there's a maybe spit spot I should look at right now because that looks like big and flat and open, <laughs> which I was not expecting up here. It's like this crazy, like, moon looking material up here. Like, I'm not seeing any big rocks, and I see tracks everywhere. It looks like people on motorcycles have been up just ripping through it. So, I'm going to look at landing kind of crosswise up that thing and see how that looks. Kind of putting my left wing over the little sign up there. I wonder how big. There's a two track road that looks like there's little ruts from the tires planning on landing across those, but I wonder if those are going to be too deep. I would land on them, but I'm uh, concerned about this sign that's sitting off to the side. So this is going to be my low, one of my low inspection passes. Carson. Shoot, that all looks so doable. Everything looked and felt great that time. It's just knowing the altitude is kind of in my head. I'm like looking down, I'm at 11.5 right now. Well, at this altitude, I'm looking at my airspeed versus my true airspeed and seeing about a 12 mile an hour difference. So I'm gonna touch down way faster than I normally do, which is okay. My old wing used to touch down way faster than this wing does. Okay, let's roll through the dips. Nice, we did it. <laughs> that is rad. Altimeter says 11,140 feet, which is the highest I have land for sure, landed, I should say. Um, I wanna see what the sign says. I'm gonna go ahead, take a quick break, and then we'll blast off back out of here. And welcome to 11,000, over 11,000 feet, in the old Freedom Fox. It's a new personal record for the highest I've ever landed. It's awesome that it must have just stayed super windy up here that none of the snow built up. But this is pretty rad. Crazy when you think about it, like mile high in Idaho, which you know is a mile high, is pretty gnarly. People uh, are worried about that because of the elevation. I've had a few friends wreck their planes up there. And here we are, pretty much two mile high. Right, just pushed the plane back, a little winded, probably because I'm at over 11,000 feet. But I'm gonna go ahead, get fired up. Let's do the more challenging part, which is getting out of here. Okay, so the one concern I have, the way I landed was going uphill. So if I take off going that way, I'm obviously taking off uphill and I'm already up here where the air is like 40% or I should say 30% thinner than it would be at sea level. So my performance is gonna be decreased by 30%. Not power wise, cause I'm turbocharged, but my prop's not gonna have as much bite and my wing's not gonna be as effective. So I'm gonna give myself a bunch of run up. I walked up to the top of that hill and looked over and it's all smooth, so I should be good. But if I get up there and I'm not going anywhere near flying speed, I'm gonna shut her down or see uh, what I should do instead. There we go. Oh, she's pulling hard up here. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh man, you gotta love the turbo. No joke guys, that was like a 300 foot takeoff at 11,000 feet. I'm gonna put that crap on my resume. That was awesome. All right, well, I'm gonna put that notch in my belt. Now say my personal best high altitude landing at over 11,000, it was 11,140 is what my altimeter said. I should double check that on a topo and make sure I have the right altimeter setting. That's pretty cool. I'm gonna now drop my way down to the Walker River, which is right here at my 12 o'clock. I got a lot of elevation to lose, or altitude, I should say. So we're just gonna zoom her down and I'm gonna take a look at the spot that I had walked out before, see how it looks uh, from the air. Maybe we'll uh, stop in there as well. Okay, 
the good old Walker River. Just chunks of ice floating down it. It is cold down there. So my goal here is to make sure for one, that there's no people around that I'd be buzzing. But number two is to uh, line up with this two track little trail I could see through this uh, little grassland area. And I walked it out and I remember it being about 500 feet. This is perfect because flying over it, I can tell it's not uh, flooded or marshy or anything like that. I think I'm gonna make an approach at it if it feels good, just because I've been on the ground here. I, uh, I think it might be worth doing, but I also am showing a, is it a west wind down here opposite? Also for reference, I am now at 6,000 feet. So we have come down 5,000 feet from uh, up there on the Sweetwaters. And there is a fence on this approach. So that's the big thing, kind of got to set up for a steep final drop into there without hitting the fence. And, uh, Try to get it slowed down enough. Ooh, we'll just skid forward. <laughs> you gotta love shock monster shocks. Those things save my butt so often when I suck at flying. <laughs> so what happened right there was I had that fence that I was trying to look out for. And uh, I wanted to, one, have plenty of clearance over the fence, but then get down as quick as I can. And I got a little antsy. Push the nose down, which makes me gain airspeed. So when I came down, tried to flare, I started floating. So I just dumped flaps and dropped it uh, from a few feet up. But again, that's what big wheels or big tires and uh, suspension are for. So yeah, I'm gonna jump out, check this place out. All right, and welcome to the beautiful East Walker River. Now, I did a fishing trip here like this last, uh, I think it was September that we came out, brought the camper. Uh, camped just down the way from here kind of like how I'm parked right next to the creek and we were catching fish right from camp so my dream since then has been to get a group of buddies to come out with the airplane set up camp somewhere just like this and do some uh, camping and fishing so with that said my goal here was just to uh, kind of inspect it and see if it's a landable spot and it definitely is I do have my rod with me I probably should rig up and just go toss in a couple casts just to see. All right, I don't have waders or anything. I just have my regular boots on. I, uh, I don't have high hopes that there's fish in here right now just because it's so cold. I think they might've moved downstream to where it might be a little warmer and the flows are a little slower. So figured we'll play around for a minute anyway. Got a little, uh, what, tiny little midge, olive midge tied on as well as a, a bead. I know I'm gonna get flack for that. Someone telling me that's that's not real fly fishing. But uh, to that I have to say, uh, okay. There is a nice little slow pool right here that I feel like I pulled a fish out of once. Go ahead and fling that in, get the drift on. Okay, well, guess we go try to find a different spot with slow water. Oh, there's a fish. All right, no luck. I uh, did spook a couple fish, but I didn't have any bites. They were uh, too smart for me or I just can't figure out what they're eating this time of the winter. So, bummer. But anyway, I think I'm gonna get back in the air. Oh, one thing, I don't know if I've even told you guys about what's in my water bottle every single time I'm out flying, which is a partnership I actually did with Leading Edge Supplements. And they're a supplement maker that focuses on uh, mental clarity and vision and all that, specifically, with fighter pilots in mind. And they reached out to me, said, hey, try our stuff. I tried their product called Severe Clear, loved it, and said, hey, do you guys wanna work together and maybe make my own flavor? So we came out with one we're calling Freedom Fuel, which comes in individually sized packets, which is rad, because I leave the whole thing in my truck, and if I'm ever on a road trip, I'll just pour some into a water. But basically, this replaces like your afternoon coffee or an energy drink, but it also has like vitamins in it to help with your mental clarity, vision, all that stuff. It doesn't leave you jittery afterwards like coffee does for me. So if you're someone like me that drinks coffee or energy drinks when you get that like 2, 3 p.m. thing, check out our uh, Freedom Fuel from Leading Edge Supplements. I'll leave a, a link below, but it's really good stuff. I'm honestly kind of addicted to the stuff. I drink it like daily, but I think that's okay. I think it's good for me because it's got vitamins in it. But anyway, let's get back up in the air and kind of slowly work our way home.
you guys hear that squelching out? That was ridiculous, and I guess it's this little GoPro charger that I've ran in here before. Let's see if it does it. My gosh. Will it work on even one? Okay, it can charge one. This is why you got to be careful what kind of USB devices you put in here. Okay, I'm only charging one GoPro battery. <laughs> Lesson learned on that one. Man, that was... That'll drive a sane man nuts. Take off trim, both fuel pumps on. Flight controls are free. Both doors are latched, half flaps. We're good to go. Sand density altitude 6,100 feet. So we'll see uh, how this thing does getting out of here. Uh, no problem. There other, are other two tracks through this area, but uh, I don't know. I don't know if any of them look any better than where I landed. Coming up on the Carson River, we'll go ahead and follow that up to Lahan, where we will scope the scene and see if there's uh, anything looking good and mosey our way home. I've flown this river quite a few times. I know there is a set of power lines coming up that cross uh, with a bridge, so I'm just going to stay at or above tree height. I know that the power lines are at or below tree height. All right, and this is where the Carson River meets the Haunton Reservoir, which uh, I've seen it lower. But it's definitely not much of a reservoir right now. It's more of like a big swamp. <laughs> There's a ton of airplane marks or tracks in the sand. I guess I can say with fair confidence that that's pretty landable. I'll <laughs> slow up and land one of these places. Landing on sand's pretty fun. So I'm gonna find one of these that I like. Go ahead and put down. Maybe that other one with the tracks. Man, when this lake fills back up, it's gonna be so nasty to swim in with all those reeds and stuff just tickling your feet. <laughs> that gives me heebie-jeebies. All right, that's where I saw some tire tracks. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, swing in and land there. See how it feels on the uh, approach. The good thing here, there's a ton of a go around. And just in time, that battery just died on that GoPro. So you're riding along with this one in the wing cam. Canadian geese on final. Ooh, someone landed in the freaking tumbleweeds, man. Who was that? Who shorted the landing? Here's a cool little spot. Take a quick break here. All right, so the consensus is that my camera's too dark. Well, Lahontan is definitely still pretty empty, but it's a pretty cool little spot, and I'm getting like the ultimate little desert trifecta today. I landed on the top of a 11,000 foot mountain, then went down, landed in the grass next to a river, and then here I am on top of a sand dune. That's like the, the full desert tour. Not much to complain about there. I think I'm gonna go ahead, change out that GoPro battery, and then work my way back home. I think we'll just pull right up here. Should be plenty of space. Basically, if I'm not off in like 400 feet, I go ahead and shut it down. I got a thousand in front of me. But sand is draggy, that's for sure. Uh, no problem though. All right, back in the hangar, safe and sound. That was a, a solid little solo mission. That was the first time in a while that I've gone and explored a completely new area to me and done two new landings to me. And it's fun now, you know, over all these years, I guess it's been like, I've had this thing for five or six years, six years. Um, over time, I've been building this skill set to get to the point to where I can go and like kind of pioneer and land at new places. And for a long time, you do a lot of practicing and then you're going out just solely to do that. But when I get to wrap it all together, like going to explore that river as a possible camping area so that I can go there to camp and fish, and I have the skill set to go in and land the plane there, it's just a cool place to be. I'm excited about that, it was fun. And that 11,000 foot mountain was something that was really rad. I kind of had that in the back of my head that that could be a possibility, but I didn't think it would be that perfect as far as not having too much wind, 
perfectly long, perfectly smooth. It honestly was like one of the easiest places I've landed. Anyway, before I wrap this one out, I do want to take a second to give a huge shout out and thank you to my friends over at Squarespace for sponsoring this video. And for those of you that aren't aware, Squarespace is the ultimate way to build a website and run your business. You start with one of their award-winning templates and you tweak and craft it into your own beautiful and professional looking website that works on both desktop as well as mobile. And I'm not exaggerating when I'm saying anyone can build a website with Squarespace. It really is that easy and they have features for every industry. So it doesn't matter if you're into photo and video like me, they have professional photo galleries. If you wanna open an online store, they have all the interfaces for that. Or if you're just making a website as a personal business card or one for a business you already own, you can do that with Squarespace and you can also buy domains from them. So they truly are the one-stop shop to build a website. So if you haven't yet, head over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to purchase, make sure you use code Trent Palmer and that'll get you 10% off at checkout. Thank you again, Squarespace, for sponsoring this one. And you guys know the drill. Like this video if you do. Subscribe if you haven't. Come be my wingman. We'll see you on the next one. Peace.